Gentlemen, start your engines. What is up? This is the Bottom Line Podcast presented by Anchor.fm, your home for sports and entertainment talk. Jimmy Finizzi, Neil Villapiano, Austin Myers with you today. We hope you're doing well as always. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to take a listen. We truly appreciate it. You already know what it is. Hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at Bottom Line WMCX. And Austin is going to give his information on where you can follow him because he just created a new Instagram account for this podcast. So we'll give him that oh, in, you get, in a few short gonna, moments. You're just going to put me right there. You're going to put me right in the spotlight. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the majority of this episode is going to be you talking. So exactly. yeah, you have. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this, so, is, this is basically this is your, your time episode. to shine, my friend. This is your time exactly. to shine. So. Exactly. But. Anyway, you already know how to hit us up. But as always, if you like what you see on YouTube, please drop a like and a comment down below. And make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. And subscribe on all audio listening platforms. Just include Jimmy when searching for this podcast. Gentlemen, how the heck are we doing today? Fantastic. I mean, I'm doing better than I'm sure Austin is knowing that the Vegas Golden Knights have to play a game seven. Oh, my God. (laughs) I mean, at least it's at home and not on the road, right? At least it's a home game. Yeah. That's true. It's true. But... I want to say uh, shout out to um, Marcus Foligno for nearly putting someone literally through the board last night. He literally oh. put Zach Whitecloud through the glass last I night. I think Zach <laughs> Whitecloud might have lost. Um, he, he really almost died last night. Mm-hmm. I was kind of concerned. I thought he actually did die uh, for a yeah. second there. See, but, it's okay. Uh, as much but, as I'm concerned about my night, I don't have to be concerned about Toronto. Well, the th- you know, hey, look, man, Damn. you know, Toronto, to- look, Toronto's got it, got themselves going. They'll probably finish their series tonight. I would yeah. imagine the bar. I mean, if they really choke this, I, I don't well, even know what to think, but I, um, then, then, they're, then they're really cursed. Yep. And so I also <laughs> had two of my predictions in the playoffs already wrong. Uh, the Islanders mm-hmm. beat the Penguins as I don't yep. think did any of us pick the Islanders. Did any of us? No. I was going to say, wow. the only one that really none, none of us the picked Islanders. the Islanders. And I feel stupid. Well, that's, that's but a little, I'm trying that's to run through my head. I want to but, say, I think but let me, let me say this. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Austin. I cut you off. I apologize. What did you I was going to say, I think Shannon was the only one that chose the Islanders out of us when we had the episode. Mm. Oh, Shannon. I was going to say, okay, did, okay. that's what I was saying. Like, did any of us pick the Islanders? Because I, I was thinking about it last night. I said, I don't think anybody did. I think yeah, well, out of the people. three of us, at least we did it. No, no, no. The of only, us three. Look, the biggest reason the Islanders won that series is because they made a change in net. That was yeah. the biggest oh, yeah. reason they won that series because I mean, Sorokin and that was Soro- definitely Yeah, big. Sorokin had a couple games where he didn't, he gave up a lot of goals, but he's, he's a rookie. But here's the other thing the dude's like 27 years old. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not mm-hmm. like he's 21. It's not like, it's not like with the Panthers starting. Um, you know, Knight, Knight who's yeah. like 21 years old and playing in his first Bro. Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, but no, look, the Islanders don't lose at home, as they've no. just proven. It's called no. Fort Never Lose for a reason. They don't mm-hmm. lose at home. Now, yes, they did lose a game at home, but they just was, don't lose very well. It was one game. It was one game. Yeah, it Come was on. one game. And Tristan Jari single-handedly mm-hmm. lost the Penguins that series. Oh, my God. Because he tried, to be, Mar- about he Jari, tried to be Marty Brodeur again, because he keeps <sighs> doing that. Over and over. That, it was, he was Terrible. making such stupid plays. There was plays where instead of covering it, he would fling his body towards the puck for yeah. allowing them to get rebounds. And yeah. you don't do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, th- I think that one league. turnover that he had to Josh Bailey kind of steal. Oh yeah, the turnover. That, oh, that, that ended the series because they're yeah. going back to they're going back to the island down three games to two. There's no way they. Oh yeah, that no, there, now, there was no. Did shot. I think there was a chance when they made it three to two? Yes, but then all of a sudden, two goals in 13 seconds is going to pretty much put I'm it around. Wrap it up. I mean, that exactly. was it. That was it. And then you look at, you know, we were just talking about Vegas and, um, and Minnesota. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that Vegas didn't even score once. I, and, I didn't watch but, the game last and, night. I'm and gonna be real. I remember Austin brought this up. Um, and we're getting I'm getting ahead of myself because we're not here to talk hockey, but <laughs> don't know, worry, don't worry. Up, I'm filling up some airtime here. <laughs> <Yeah>. Um <laughs> the thing that's concerning that Austin did bring up is that there are times where Vegas just doesn't score for whatever reason. Right. And twice now in this series alone, they've been shut out. Yep. So I'm not saying that. They're not going to score. I think that they will score probably at home with the crowd behind them. I would be stunned yeah. if they did not score. And Another issue with us is, I mean, we were missing a few key players last night. We lost. That's Mickey true. Man. 
we lost McNabb yesterday to COVID. Oh, wow. but you didn't you you did not like McNabb when the series started. No, you were I like, I don't like McNabb at all. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So when you're saying we're missing a key player in Brady McNabb. It's but he's like a key wait a player. Listen, he's a key pl- player when Petrangelo just stands there and watches an empty net goal go in instead of diving at it. Fair. Petrangelo, else, uh, fair. did I not tell you? No Look, you can tell you can tell how Petrangelo is acting. He does not want he to be in want Vegas. To be there. I'm sorry. He, no disrespect to Vegas fans, but he doesn't want to be there. No, no he doesn't. He has no intentions of being there. And I no. Mean, like I said, <laughs> and now he's stuck there. Players. We were, st- we were still mi- we're still missing Pacioretty, who was on the ice yesterday, supposedly before everything. Yeah. No video. Ev- no video evidence, though. No, no video nothing. evidence. Mm-hmm. Not like not like in Toronto, where they clearly show that when John Tavares is skating. No, nothing. Nothing. That's great. Yeah. Uh, no, exactly. Here's... And then. And supposedly we lost Ryan Reeves for some unknown reason. When was this? Was this in Literally game six? like two hours before the game. See, this is the thing. This is the thing. If Vegas goes down one nothing in game seven, they're, they're done. I'm not trying to yeah. be like really yeah, cool, but if they go down, if they're down a goal, the attitude and the feeling and the confidence level for Vegas <laughs> just goes down because they're going to look 100%. at it, especially with the core – and look at how the core has reacted to these situations before. When they get down like that, they're like, oh, no, here we go again. Like, that's the <laughs> thinking. Like, I'm telling you, that's going to be the thinking. On the bench, they're going to be like, crap. We're really going to yep. lose to an inferior team again. Because, what, yep. two years ago with San Jose, and let's be honest, the Vegas was a better team. I mean, they have I mean, more yeah, talent than, real, than San Jose. Two years but, ago, that whole San Jose series should be I mean, like, and let's not forget, way. and sorry, Austin, let's not forget Vegas was up 3-1 in the series. Oh, it's so, three nothing we in the also, third period of game seven. Oh, wait, you want to add forget. insult to injury? Up three nothing in the third period of game seven. Let's oh yeah, that too. <laughs> Let's and, not forget. And, yeah, I know. I know. But we also can, need to not forget the Stanley Cup pl- final run we had. Right. Mm. That run was great. And oh, that's true. That's hockey, true. It was. And then we were well, look, that, that, there was a true. reason why most people did not pick Vegas to win that series because it was Ovechkin's time. Yeah, that was right. He had gotten over the hump. He was in the final. There was no way he was going to let anybody beat him. Yeah, no way. No way. I don't recall him doing a whole lot in the finals. I don't really remember, to be honest. That finals to me kind of was like a blur just because it was like, I don't think either team was expected to be there. He didn't even score the game winning goal. It was freaking Lars Eller. Yeah, Lars 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 Eller is good. Yeah, no, I, I know. I know. I'm just saying, like it was. But, it wasn't even Ovi that scored the game-winning goal. Yeah, the, but no. It, it, look, the bottom line is simply this. You know, no pun intended. The bottom line is simply this: with, with Vegas, they have to score first in Game Seven. They cannot allow Minnesota to get. I, but even get if rolling. we score, even if we score first, we've seen it to where Minnesota comes out swinging. Right, and look yeah. at Minnesota. What was it, Game? Was a game like four where they had like what six shots through two periods and they were still only down by a goal? Mm-hmm. I mean, the 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 wild play like the Islanders defensively, they just mm-hmm. have a system that's very, very have the wild been blown out at all in any of the games that they played against Vegas, as far as I know. Not no two games ago. No two games ago. Two games what was ago. the score two games ago? It was four nothing. All yeah, right. Well that you. okay, that's fair. That's fair. But like that was <laughs> the first no, but like here's the thing. During the regular season, who was the team that was giving Vegas the most fits? Minnesota. Minnesota Wild. Out of all the teams, Vegas did not want to – and this is – and you know that the Avalanche are licking their chops knowing that regardless of who they play, whether it's Vegas or Minnesota, they had to go the full seven. They've been sitting around for nearly a week now. Yep. Waiting to play. They're fresh. They're ready to go. This is that moment. And You're right. It's going to be difficult for Minnesota or Vegas, regardless, like I said, of who gets there. And – I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but like you look at you look at the North Division, you look at Toronto. Like I'm going to be honest with you, like this might it, this is setting up where Toronto could really make that run that they've been hoping for. Because if you it look also, at the way it's going, the old, they're they're going to play also Winnipeg. A thing with Toronto, though, you got to really think about it. After the whole issue with Tavares, that's really lit a flame under him that really shows that. Hey, we need to get this done. 100%. We want to win it. Oh, yeah. And that's what happens with a lot of these Stanley Cup teams. You look for that one moment that energizes the whole team. Like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be cruel or anything, but like look at Vegas. What was the big thing that got them rolling the entire season? Forget just the playoffs, the entire season. It was the unfortunate shootings that happened in Sin City. 
but that but they rallied around that and they yep. rallied, and the, the city rallied around them and they made that run look yep. at look at look at st louis the very next year they rallied around the fact that they were trashed by january 1st i mean they were dead they were last cool. and, then, and then layla anderson came along oh and also for and also layla anderson and also gloria I mean, they rallied yes, around both of those that, things that and they too, went all yeah. the way. But the turning point of that entire year for them was the controversial, I think it was game three, where if you remember, um, Timo Meyer for the Sharks swatted the puck down and they didn't call, you know, a hand pass. If you're Mount Austin, I think you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And then Eric Carlson scored and it was two to one and, you know, San Jose won in overtime, but they turned it around. They didn't lose another game in that series. They won the next three and moved on to the cup and then won the cup in seven games. Yep. One of these teams, it could be Toronto, it could be someone else, but one of these teams has to have that defining moment that says they are not going to be denied. And if Toronto, you look at the way Toronto has responded since John Tavares got hurt, they look pretty good. And Alex Galchenyuk looks like he finally has found a role in the NHL because what he just did in game four was phenomenal. Galchenyuk, he's definitely found something. One of those players. <laughs> yes. He's one of those players that I didn't expect to go somewhere this in the playoffs, but here he is. He's off and running now. Well, yep. good for him. Good for him. Oh, yeah. I, we all knew what we all knew the type of player he was coming out of coming out of the draft. We knew what he mm-hmm. could do. And he got and look, he's been on what four teams 14. in his career? This is his fifth team, right? I think so. Yeah. And he's playing against the Montreal Canadiens, who he had was originally drafted by. You don't think he wants to try to bury them right now oh, to he's, put them he's away? Definitely burying them. And I think the Canadians, you looked at I looked at the bench, I looked at Shea Weber, and he's like, Yeah, we're not winning. We're we're screwed. No. We are not winning the series. <laughs> nope. We have no, no chance. Because they just lost both games at home. If they somehow pull pull this off and come all the way back, I think Montreal makes a long run in the playoffs, honestly. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's like one of those things where it's like, but whoever gets whoever gets Winnipeg in the next round. Look, Winnipeg's mm. running on running on a high right now. They oh, just Winnipeg's swept. On a high. They yeah, I, swept. I, I, I was gonna I was just gonna say to kind of wrap this banter up here, Neil. You and I Jimmy, look like Jimmy, geniuses Jimmy's right now. Basically, telling me to like Neil. Enough with the hockey. We get it. We get <laughs> no, it. no, no, no. Because I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm actually enjoying about, this conversation. How about the Brooklyn Nets, by the way, up 2-0 against Boston? Oh man, and, and, and the Knicks won last night to tie and the this series. So. And the Knicks. Listen, I can't. I can't. And, and the, the, I can't the enjoy basketball. Wild, right now, I know, man. Austin. Austin, 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 we're not trying to keep you out of the conversation. We know no, you don't like basketball. I'm just saying, I can't. I can't enjoy basketball right now because my team didn't even make the playoffs. <laughs> oh, the Bulls, right? Uh, no, the Raptors. Oh, my bad. Oh, I forgot which team wow, you're. Uh, well, okay. I mean, because you live. Don't you live in Chicago? Like, yeah, I live like an hour, but I haven't. Really, okay, so I, I don't want to. I don't want to converse fan. with the Bulls crowd. <laughs> That's bad enough. There you go. It's the same. No, but the no, Bears. You mean the t- I'm sorry, the Tampa Bay Raptors? Yeah. Let's hope that never happens I again. Say. I hope that never happens again. I hope by next year they're allowed to play in Toronto yeah. and we don't do this ever again. No, they'll, they'll, they'll be allowed to idea. play in Toronto next year. All I year. know is they will if be. Kawhi wouldn't have left us, we probably would have been okay. Okay, and I just want to say really quick about that. Um, Kawhi should have just stayed in Toronto. Oh yeah, really- Thank you. Because if he really thought that Paul George was going to be the, the the superstar that everybody thinks he, Paul George is not that great. Okay, <laughs> he's not at the same level as Kawhi, LeBron, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, Anthony Davis, even like the likes of Rudy Gobert. He's he's not there. He's not there. Paul George, bro, this man was talking so much garbage. During the first two games, guess what? You just lost to Luka Doncic almost single handedly. Like he mm. just, and there's no way they're winning the series. Yeah, no they way. might not get swept, but they, and Kawhi's leaving. He has the option yeah. to leave after this year. He's gone. Mm-hmm. He's going to go Toronto. somewhere else. Come back to Toronto. Well, I mean, Toronto, <laughs> look, bro, and they brought in Serge Ibaka and he played five minutes. Five. That's ridiculous. I, I I think I think that says a lot. I mean, I, it says I, mean a lot. I still think we need to get rid of freaking. Uh, now I'm blanking. I don't, if you say Fred Van Fleet, I'm walking out. No, no, I like Fred. Fred's great. Oh, okay, okay. No, is he, wait, wait. He's a free agent, is he not? No, I think he is. He might be. Oh wait, no, he's not. Okay. Yeah, know. no, I'm pretty sure. I thought he was like looking for a big contract. I could be wrong he about that. Be. I don't know, but. While you guys are anyway, talking about though. the Indy, while you guys talk about the Indy 500, I'm looking up Fred Van Fleet's contract. <laughs> he means contract. What, what, what does his contract say? Hold on. 
Hold on. He signed a con. Okay, all right, all right. That's what I thought. But, he no, signed a contract last that. November. Oh, okay, he signed, okay. He signed a four. Oh my god, a four-year, eighty-five million dollar contract, which makes it the largest contract by an undrafted player. Yeah, then no, he, he's he's not going anywhere. No, but no, I mean <laughs> he could be he's not going anymore. anywhere. All I know is Toronto needs to get rid of freaking. Well, Kyle I Lowry. Had his name. I just had his name. Is, Kyle it, is Lowry? it the coach? Yeah, Kyle Lowry. We need to get rid of Lowry. Why? He is Why? being fucking terrible. Oh, he's a walking goodness. bucket. What do you mean he's terrible? <laughs> terrible. What do you mean he's terrible? He's fucking terrible. Oh, he, he, all right. Oh, come on. So here's, no, no, I'm I, telling you. I, I agree he's not case, what he used to be, but he's not terrible. If that's the case, then I'm telling you right now, the Clippers are going to try and get Kyle Lowry to pair with Kawhi and Paul George, oh, which no. won't do that much because guess what? The Clippers <laughs> don't have a bench. They no, traded, they don't. They traded Sweet Lou Williams. Why? Yeah, yeah why you did Rondo? that, I have no idea. Bro, you think you think Rondo, honestly, was better than Lou Will? Bro. No. Bro. <laughs> Get a life. Anyway, Get though, a life. that's the bottom line for this banter. <laughs> it is can, we just, can we do, like, an update for all four sports just to, yeah. just to keep it going? <laughs> I think Julio Jones is going to get traded to the Titans. Mm. Hot take, bro. No I want way. That. You have no idea how badly I want him on the Titans. No, no. Bro. Oh my god. It, bro, it, it would Tannehill? be nice. It would be nice for Tannehill. It bro. would. And I'm already. Looking I, I don't at, think dude. it's happening. Also, if anybody knows who Matthew Lombardi is, he he's a Giants uh, B reporter. Please stop putting out articles that say the Giants should go after Julio Jones. We don't have no. the money. No, um, that, that, that's although, not happening. Although, if they want to take a second round pick and Evan Ingram, I wouldn't have an issue with that. Hey, thank you, you Julio. I mean, yes. bro, if you got if the Giants had Julio Ingram with everybody team. else, if Daniel Jones doesn't succeed at all, you just gotta cut him. You, you, I mean, you, you just you, gotta you're cut done. him. You're, you're done. terrible. You're done. You're done. But no, I, I think Julio. I think I, I feel like Julio's gonna get end up traded to like a random team we didn't expect, like. I don't know. But, I mean, oh, I, mean yo. I mean, I, I mean, I made the, I made, I the last time we talked about it, I made the random prediction of uh, JJ Watt to uh, the Cardinals, and it happened. And it, 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 just, all right, yeah, so Austin, you, Austin, you called that right one. Now, I remember that. Austin, right now, where do you, where do you think Julio goes? Right. Just say it. No, pick a team. I don't care. Pick a team. I got nothing today. Oh, you got nothing. Random one be- for me: Dolphins. What I, I I know I know it's what? totally random, but they're the first team that came to my head. I don't know, bro. bro. First team Is that came fun? to my head was Buffalo. <laughs> yo, Paris, Bills, Steph- okay, Wait, yo, okay. with Stephon Diggs. Okay, are you that, serious? That would be, that would like, be. bro. But you know what? You know what? <laughs> Super I Bowl or bust if that's the case. <laughs> Being a Giants fan, obviously, like I don't hate the Patriots as much as other people do because the Giants have clout over the. Patriots, a lot of clout. If he were to go yeah. to the Patriots, I wouldn't even be that mad. I'd be like, all right, sick. No, because yeah. look at the amount of moves that Belichick has made this year. You have no idea how badly I want a Bucks Patriots Super Bowl. Oh I want my it. gosh. I want all that smoke. I want Belichick. Can you imagine? Brady. Yeah, I want it. But if I and, swear, and, if, and Julio, if the Patriots beat him, if Julio goes to the Bucks or the Chiefs, I'm done. Because oh. this, this league is stupid. So um, there's that. And then talking uh, about baseball, yeah, uh, Shohei Otani is going to win the MVP, and it's not even close. What are you, oh what are you talking about? God, what about, he is. What about Vladdy? He is, he's on another What level. about Vlad Guerrero? Yeah, leave, don't leave Vladdy out of the picture. But Otani is, like, awesome. He pitches and he plays the field. Fair enough. Yeah, the, the modern-day Babe Ruth. Fair enough. But, uh, I, mean, I guess. It, it's yeah. hard not to talk about Vladdy when he's making history. No, he, I, I did that. I think right now he leads the, or either he leads the league he or he's the league in tied home in home runs. Yeah, he leads yes. the league with twenty-two yes. runs, I believe. And he looks nothing like his father. <laughs> I know. I, I'm on it. I look at his face. Like, no, like, you know, you're right. Like you're right. Around. No, but he plays just like his father does. Swings at yes. literally anything. Look at his stance. His stance is very similar to his. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just bigger. He's just yep. um, bigger, a lot bigger. Because I remember Vlad being somewhat skinny. If I remember correctly, mm-hmm. he wasn't really You're a right. very big player, but, but, um, but this guy is jacked, man. He's jacked. Toronto's an interesting team with a lot of like former MLB players, particularly Hall of Famers. Well, I mean, you have Vlad Guerrero, you have Bichette, who's mm. well, his dad wasn't a Hall of Famer, he's a former Yankee. 
And then yeah. you have um, Biggio. You have Kevin, oh. which is interesting. And then you also have Guriel, uh, the younger brother of um, the other Guriel in Houston. I think he's still in Houston. I, I don't even know anymore. I don't but, know. Um, you also have I mean, Randall Gritchick. The, the thing with that team is that team had so much hype around it when we picked up both Vladdy and Bichette. Mm, but, we yeah. drafted them, right? I think we did. Because I, like, I don't remember – them like acquiring them from anybody else. I, I remember know. them just having them. We in the probably system. drafted them, yeah. But it was, it was that whole thing where they had, with so much hype around it, yeah. and then yeah. it's like we're so inconsistent. Well, you need a well getting getting George Springer helps. Yeah, but then again, yes. he hasn't been healthy at all since the season yeah. started. For whatever has reason, he, has he even played yet this year? He has. Yeah, I think he's he he played like a few games. But every time the Yankees play the Blue Jays, they, he's not he's not healthy. So he hasn't. And I think not to be cruel, but I think he's kind of paying the price for cheating right now. Somewhat. Yeah. I mean, do I think George Springer was the was a main culprit in the cheating no. scandal? Probably not. But no. he was in, I mean, he knew about it. He let it happen. True. He's not complaining. True. He didn't get his world. He got his World Series ring. I mean, uh. Do you think cheating Got probably helped him? World Series uh, ring. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, what we call that, we call that a uh, Mickey Mouse World Series. Ooh. Ooh, when you wish upon a <laughs> Only star. Fitting. When you Only cheat fitting. upon a star, just, actually. Just like, just like the Avalanche is a Mickey Mouse uh, president's trophy. Oh, my God. Yeah, don't, don't, not I, that, don't, not that don't get me started on that. Yeah. Don't get me started on that. Austin but. sent me a message on Instagram. He goes, not my president's trophy. He sent me the same thing. I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> he sent me the same thing. That's oh, a, my new goodness. hashtag, hashtag but... not my president's trophy winner. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen. With all that banner aside, let's go to school. Austin, this is your time to shine because now we're oh, wait, this to isn't, talk this about Oh, wait, this isn't something. the boxing episode? <laughs> no. This bro, is we're not about talking, no, this bro, we're not going to talk about Jake Paul and Floyd Mayweather? No, see, no. this isn't the no, episode no where we're going zero. to talk Goodbye. about um, Mark anyway. Andre Fleury throwing punches. <laughs> oh, damn. That, and that was fun to watch. Oh, bro, man. I'm telling you, Mark Andre Fleury and Ryan Reeves, um, they, they fight in the locker room. They probably do. They yeah. probably box. They, they shadow. No, probably. I'll tell you. They shadow box in the locker room. They shadow. No, they do. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. Nobody's talking about it. But anyway, and I bet you, and I bet you, Flurry is. I bet you, Flurry like has beaten him every single time. <laughs> He's just like gone for the low blow, got to the, got to the the chest, just pff, low blow. It's over. Okay, before we get the, started here, we the post, muffin man. I posted the photo on Instagram. I know mm-hmm. you both saw it. Okay, it just looked. Colton heard us all. Okay, all right. So I'm a very happy person now. <laughs> Wait. So there what happened? Go. I didn't hear that. Wait. What was what? What happened? Okay, the photo that I posted on, on Instagram that you both saw on my story, Colton Herta has seen, so I'm now happy. Oh, nice. So I'm now happy. Nice. Good for you, man. So nice. now your life is complete. Oh, shout out to shout out to Steve Durso for meeting Stephen A. Smith last night. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So, <laughs> that was, everybody's that meeting, was something, Everybody's man. interacting with celebrities that, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. But that sort of the laundry list of celebrities he met. But anyway, the long list of celebrities. He's met. I mean, he's met. He's met some pretty well-known people. Yeah. Did anybody did Stephen A. It's a pretty decent about Connor list. McDavid? Yes. And let's never and never make Stephen A. talk about hockey ever again because it really no, hurts. It hurts my brain. <laughs> no, it really hurts my brain when he starts. Even he even said like I don't know think about hockey except the puck is black and I'm like yeah, oh, here we go. That. I mean, I'm like, I'm like that's kind of disturbing to say. I that's, wish you wouldn't say that. I mean, it was kind of funny. Let's be real. What, what? It is funny. I can't wait till first take is forced to talk about it. No, <laughs> that's gonna suck. I mean, also that's really with, uh, Wayne Gretzky. They, 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 they should have us on the show to talk about it. We'll, we'll school them. <laughs> yeah, right. Now Wayne Gretzky. Anyway, Wayne Gretzky's no. with TNT. Yeah, yeah that's that's with TNT. Funny. That one was. That bro, one he, was interesting. Bro, he like he saw the Oilers and he was like, "Nah, man." Nah, he, he's like, "I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm tired of this. I'm I tired." After they got losing. swept, he's like, "No, nope, I'm not doing this anymore." Yeah, no, th- that was that was it. He was looking for a way out, and he was like, "Hmm, I guess this is a better time than any to leave." Yep. <laughs> Since we're on the Gretzky train, real quick, I want to get. But no, you guys in, 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 in all, yep, yeah, but in, my in next all jersey, I want to get. In, in all seriousness, all the best to win Gretzky. I'm sure he's going to oh, yeah. be great on TNT. Okay, so I need your guys' opinion on this jersey that I want to get. Yeah, I oh, want to get an Arizona retro with Gretzky on it. No, no, 
no, that's no, no, no. First of all, yeah, he coached there, but he didn't play there. I know. No, it's just for do you wanna, do you don't, get something don't crazy. Even take your chance. No, if you want to get something crazy, throw shade at Maple Leafs fans who almost got Gretzky way back in the day. Get a Gretzky oh. Maple Leafs jersey just to really oh. fuck with people. Oh, or or if you want to go crazy, pick random, aka St. Louis Blues. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky jersey. Who remembers that? Nobody even remembers that. Uh, I, I I do slightly, but I, I totally forgot he played for the Blues for a split second. But he played he played like half a season with them. I mean, so. I could also try and uh, piss Neil off and get him for a door St. Louis jersey. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we don't talk. About, yeah, we don't talk about those seven games that he played with. Him. With you. Come on, <laughs> it was only seven games, so it wasn't like he played like a whole season. But you knew you knew that wasn't going to last. Yeah, no, and that, that wasn't going to last. But when he goes like, oh, I'm going to St. Louis, I'm like, of all the teams, that's so random. <laughs> it's not even like, that's not Completely even like. a random it, team. I was, like, I was thinking like Montreal, maybe the backup carry price just for, just for giggles. But then he's like, oh, no, St. Louis. I'm like, the only team that offered you a contract was St. Louis? Mm. Why? I say, I, comes, I say we have Martin Brodeur come out of uh, retirement to back up Mark Andre. No, no, no. I mean, no. let's be real. That's not going to happen. If anything, if anything, he needs to back up Blackwood because we need the help. Oh, so, my I mean, yeah, let's get rid. Yeah, let's get rid of Wedgwood. <laughs> Don't you dare speak speak negatively about Scott Wedgwood. How oh, dare you? Goodness. How dare you? How dare anyway. you? He shut out the he shut out the Bruins in Boston. Who go? Who else can say that? Hey, hey, let's not forget about those Providence Bruins the other night. Oh, oh my God. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know. I wasn't watching. All right, gentlemen. Let's let's get back on the track here, and let's oh, close. Okay. Literally, no pun intended. Now, no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. Let's yeah, no, get back no, on the no track. pun intended. That was not intentional. But anyway, yeah, it was. So now, I'm sure, it was. Austin. Was... Austin, this is your time to shine, my dude, because you are going to talk to us about the Indianapolis Five Hundred. Now, I do have a couple of notes here on this race. What I do know, because I know. Little to nothing about this. But what I do know is that Takuma Sato won it last year, and he's racing it again this year, so he's going to try and defend his crown. And you also have guys with the likes of Scott Dixon, Colton Herta, who does ring a bell to me, James Hinchcliffe, who the only reason I know who he is is because he's from Dancing with the Stars, okay? And, yes, I did watch that one episode. Don't knock me for it. I'm never watching it again. But, anyway, I take Come on, don't hate <laughs> I'm, I'm, only, I'm only joking. In all seriousness, though, they are it's an okay pretty show. talented dancers on there. It's okay. But anyway, I digress. Felix Rosenquist, you have as well. Scott McLaughlin, you have as well. And this is very interesting because you do have a woman competing in this race, which I find to be very, very amazing. So props to her. Last Simona De Silver This is, uh, who, this is the who, by the way, when, yep, when looking at the odds for this race, Simona has a plus 50,000 chance. To win this race. And we were talking about this off the air. We were like, whoever bets, Neil, you brought this up. Whoever bets like five dollars on her, five dollars. If she wins it, yep. The amount of money that that person's gonna make is gonna be insane. Can can you if she pulls this off, I'll I'll feel very happy for that person. You would make more money doing that than betting on any horse in the preakness in the Belmont. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I'm serious. Like it's you know. No, no. You're, you're I actually low key. I actually low key want to pick her just just cause. <laughs> I just want to you know. I want to be right so that everyone could just look at me with stunned faces, like a woman A, and who was projected to finish in dead last. I mean, out of 33, she's starting in the back. Yeah, all I mean, the way yeah, in the back. Like, when you yep, look at her, you look at her average speed compared to like in row eleven, the last row. Else. It, it was not great. No. Nope. Her average speed was a 228, where Scott Dixon's was like a 231. Mm, yeah, just, that's true. That's and true. It, also, it also doesn't help that um, her car was set up by Penske, which is supposedly one of the greatest teams in IndyCar. Mm-hmm. They right. all have fallen off a cliff this – they've all decided to fall off a cliff this season with Scott McLaughlin being – well, not this season, but during the Indy 500 – and it's Scott McLaughlin, who's the highest Penske driver, starting in the middle of row six. He's probably right. he's probably their show good. 
for Penske, he's probably their best shot at winning at winning the Indy 500. Probably. Mm. Considering where he's starting, considering yes, he, but knowing how knowing this race very well, when you're in the middle of the pack, you're exposed to a lot of the stuff that goes on around you, and one little touch and your day's over. Right. Yeah, it's no, you're right. You're right. It's but, it's the same thing. Like it's the same thing. Like in NASCAR, is that if you get hit just even a tad bit, the amount of crap it, that could happen right yeah. then and there, like you can just. It's over. Like it's yeah, over. C- considering the fact with how close the cars are to each other, sometimes and look, I it's mean, not you, like you, someone could be like crashing into a wall. Yeah, or could be set on but the fire. Thing with cars, is that these cars are so sensitive. They are the sensitive. Car, these cars are super sensitive compared to yeah. the, the NASCAR, and it, it, because of NASCAR has all the side force and all the down force. Yeah, and it also helps that they're closed quarter panels where these, where the <laughs> Indy cars are open, so you even get tagged and in the tire just a little bit, you've got a chance of either puncturing or it just going haywire and deciding to go straight to a wall. Right, right. But, but and no, they're I also mean, this... very likely to go airborne. We've seen it multiple times. Oh my goodness. I'm very upset I, with I, this. I hope that doesn't happen. I'm very upset with right this about weekend that. because you know there's a there's a uh, tradition we do in one of my ch- in one of my groups that I'm in where we keep a counter of how many cars go airborne during the week. Right. And I want to say, I think it was two years ago, we had like 13 cars go airborne. And this year's, this year's, we've had zero so far. And we're like right, two weeks good. in. So, huh. Very, very, uh, very interesting stuff. Well, let's hope no cars go airborne in this race. But And it's different, it's and be, it's different uh, in NASCAR because a lot of the tracks in NASCAR is just, you know, going around in a circle. With the Indy 500, it's, like, very different. You have uh, to be really careful with the moves that you make. Yeah, you have to be yeah, careful with yeah. that. Because, like, like Austin mentioned, because the cars are so sensitive, if you make one little misturn and you, like, dink somebody, that could just cause a whole melee of, of stuff that could happen. Just put you – just that just ends it, right? Like, that could literally just end it. Like, you could get oh, hit on right. the first lap. And you're done. Like, that's just it. Mm. But, no, this is going to be... Uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting race here. But I think one guy... Well, I actually have a couple of guys I'm keeping my eyes on here, Austin. And that is uh, Jack Harvey I'm keeping my eyes out on. I'm also Jack keeping Harvey. my eyes out on your boy, Colton Herta. Because, apparently, from what you've told me, Colton Herta is amazing. Um, and he also saw your Instagram story. Colton way, so props, so, to, props see, to Colton I'm Herta. I'm not going to say much about Herta during the, the Indy 500 because he's <laughs> not known for his oval racing. Right. But, but his move to Andretti Autosport this year was definitely a big one for him, being that he was over with Andretti Steinbrenner, which is Andretti Autosport's smaller team. Right. So he was getting kind of like the bare pieces of what Andretti is not using. And I mean, he took that car to two, he took the Andretti Steinbrenner to two wins. He's, I think he's under for the youngest driver to ever win in the Indy five in Indy car. And oh. he's already locked himself with a win so far this season. He won St. Pete, I believe it was. So it's kids got confidence. Hmm. No, that's, that, that's an interesting point. I, of, of course I can't argue it because I know little to nothing about this, but I digress. Um, I'm gonna, Jimmy, but, Jimmy, I'm going to make you watch this race. <laughs> no, in, in all seriousness, I actually might sit down and watch it this weekend. I might. I just depending might. Depending on how I'm god actually awfully curious to see how it boring goes. it is. What's that? I said depends on how god-awfully boring it is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but no. Well, um, I mean, the I'm great thing ke- about racing is that it gives all you right. the opportunity to leave the room for five minutes so you miss a couple laps if you feel like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you could just text Austin and say, "Hey, when are we down to the final five laps?" And then, oh my god, turn it on. Even the final five is not as it, it just hurts. It Everything hurts. <laughs> it hurts. But I'm also keeping my eyes out on Pain. obviously the defending champion Takuma Sato. I want to see if he defends oh, his title. I think he has a. I think he has a good chance to, in all honesty. And, outside uh, of row five. See, here's the issue. When you're on the outside, that's a scary place to be because you could have a car go from the inside or the middle straight up and it could just take everybody out. We've yeah, seen it happen I, actually, I actually have a question for 
I actually have a question, Austin, about mm-hmm. about that. What do you think is like the best position to necessarily be in when you're trying, especially if you're like further in the pack, if you want to try to get up and maybe even make a run at, you know, winning, what would be the best place to be on the left side, on the inside or on the right? Per- preferably you would want to be in the inside because this track is not a self-washing track. So what that means is when they wreck, they will either slide up track or they will like kind of go to the middle and then just stop. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I just Where that, other no, I was trying to figure because like because yeah. you know again I know NASCAR better than I know the Indy 500 mm-hmm. and that type of racing. So like it's different because it's not three rows; it's two. Yeah, and but people even talk NASCAR, about see even, the, even with NASCAR though, ninety percent of their tracks are self washing in the corners. So if you right. in a corner, if the car is going to slide down the banking. Right, and I know a lot of NASCAR people I've spoken to, they say they prefer that you'd be on the inside, Mm -hmm. on the inside lane, because not only to avoid possibly hitting the wall or having something like that, but also if you get down low, you have a better chance of, you know, getting behind somebody and passing them. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, I don't know if that's the same thing or somewhat similar. Well, it's kind of the same thing, but with IndyCo, you have to be more aware of the draft too. Right. The draft, especially in the Indy 500, is a huge thing to have because this track is 2.5 miles of absolute mayhem doing easily i want to say the fastest speed we saw this week has been like a 242 Oof. oh okay wow. so okay draft is definitely a big thing to have that way you can carry that momentum into a corner and attempt to make the pass and if you think better of it you back out okay mm-hmm. No, I mean, c- I mean consider, consider, considering the speed of some of the cars, I mean, that that really shouldn't come as a shock to anybody, though, right? Mm-hmm. But, but no, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm actually, I actually am thinking about sitting down and watching this weekend. It's May 30th, so that will be this upcoming Sunday, yeah, this a Memorial Day weekend. So if you have no plans going on, especially because we know Memorial Day weekend, it's going to be an absolute madhouse, especially considering the fact that COVID restrictions are starting to ease up. So if you are going out, please be careful. If you're not, and you're going to be stuck in the house, and if you're a racing fan, why not watch the Indy 500? I mean, it's it's entertainment. It's it's something to do. And you're going to see a bunch of guys uh, race fast cars. I mean, what can I say? You see, the thing about that is – not only is the Indy 500 on that day, later in the evening, NASCAR's longest race is on in the Coke 600. <laughs> and that's, that's 600 miles. It's like, it's, it's a long time. It takes a while. <laughs> I'll probably right, end up falling you. asleep during but, it. Let's be real. But no, yeah, this is, uh, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is actually the 105th running of the Indy yeah, 500. Am I right running. Okay. Yeah, it's it really Neil says look at Neil says look at my background. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it'll literally send your background. I had no idea. Jeez. If, if 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 you're not watching on YouTube, Neil has a background of the Indy 500 wallpaper on uh, on Zoom. So if you're not watching on YouTube, he's got that. But but I literally didn't notice that. I'm sorry. But no. Um. But yeah, I'm I'm just looking at this roster of races. You got a pretty promising roster of of guys. So like I said, Colton Herta is. Amazing, according to Austin. Um, Alex Rossi, I like too. Uh, James James Hinchcliffe, I think, is going to be a bit of an a bit of an underdog in this well, race. I think he's got a chance it, to pull something it, off. Since you talk about Hinchcliffe, Hinchcliffe hasn't been really dominant or performing well in the Indy 500 since his crash he had back in 2017. Right. His crash in 17 was one of the worst crashes in the, that we've seen in in anything leading up to the Indy 500 because they were told he had been told that he wasn't going to be able to a walk and B drive a car again. And I mean, look at him now. It's sure. It's been years and years, but, and I mean, his, I talked about this because his former teammate in Robert Wickens had a horrible accident back in 28. No. So Hinchcliffe's wreck was 50. Right. And then Wickens was 2018. Wickens had okay. a really bad accident in 2018 at Pocono where his car got out of Poconos. He, 
his car went over one car, ended up hitting a fence, doing a Ooh. bunch of spins, and he's been paralyzed from the waist down since. And it's it's a shame because Robert was easily one of my favorite drivers. I got an autograph from him and everything. And it's like, we're now just starting to see him gain strength in his legs again. He's starting to walk a little bit more. He was just back in, he was just back in a race car the other day, testing with IMSA with hand control. So, I mean, it's kind of bittersweet to see. Wow. That's, and it that, just that, shows some amazing. of the safety precautions we put in these cars now, because not only yeah. are they closed cockpits now, with yeah. the new aero screens. Yeah. But you had you now have the tub, which is pretty much if the whole the car itself is supposed to break apart and you'll just be left with the center console that the drivers are in. Right. And I mean look, it's a, look, out of all the competitive sports, and you know, we can certainly put racing as a sport, you know, it's covered by sports networks. I mean, let's let's, you know, it is what it, it is a sport. It's the most dangerous one because you like in a funny way, like, yeah, you're driving a car, but there's a lot that's out of your control. Unfortunately, like you can only do so much. And then there's other factors, how other drivers react. I mean, in a funny way, I I was told one time, you know, driving is a form of communication in many ways. Now that's a little bit different because that's just regular driving as opposed to racing. But I mean, look, we've seen some of the best to ever do it, whether it's NASCAR or or stock car, whatever the case may be, we've seen them unfortunately get serious injuries. Or if unfortunately, if you're someone like Dale Earnhardt, actually lose your life uh, doing God rest, it. God rest his soul. Because mm. it's uh, it's difficult. But you know that racing is continuing to do better at making it safer, mm. helping these guys, um, you know, be as safe as possible. But at the end of the day, everybody just wants to come out of there okay. Even if there is a crash, you just hope that it's nothing, nothing you know, serious, major right? yeah. or anything like that. You're hoping that you just come out of it, to put it bluntly, alive. <laughs> I mean, yes. Because we know how difficult it is to, you know, do that, especially if you're doing it for however many laps. Yeah, and I particular mean, within races. the last few decades, we've had a few casualties within IndyCar. Some of the most noticeable being Justin Wilson, once again at Pocono. Got hit with a piece of nose cone on the helmet and right. broke the helmet and killed him instantly, supposedly. And then Las Vegas 2011, which I lived 20 minutes from the track, and I remember seeing all the smoke and stuff from it. We had unfortunately lost one of the best in Dan Weldon because we had packed like 40 something cars on a little one and a half mile racetrack, and we had. Somebody gets spun and six cars went airborne. Just happened that when Dan Weldon's car went airborne, he went straight into the fence and caught a support pole. And as bad as it sounds, it's, <clears throat> that's the stuff that they're trying to stop now. And that's why they have A, the aero screens and B, the tubs. Without right. those, we could end up having something like that. And sure, the aero screens are open at the top, right above the head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're not exposing, it's not exposing the helmet or anything anymore. Right. right. And I mean, it's the same thing with Formula One now. It, IndyCar literally took what Formula One has with the halo and just put yeah. a fiber glass screen around it. I mean, no. it, look, yes. like it's like, and he, and look, he makes a very good point because again, at the end of the day, they're trying to just make it as safe as possible. And look, there's still just, you can't make it 100% safe where you could have a, a situation where a car goes flying into the air or something like that and, and or tumbles over. It's You can only protect so much, but mm. it's come a long way since like even 20 years ago. It's yeah, certainly just, come a long way. Especially with these open wheel cars. And I mean, we've seen, right, we, yeah. just saw, we just saw it back in November with the F1 race. We had Romain <laughs> Grosjean, who is part-time in IndyCar. He got spun doing like 180 miles an hour, went through an Armco barrier, car broke in half, caught fire. Grosjean miraculously came out with just minor, with burns on his hands and that was it. Right. Which is amazing to see because of how safe these cars are now. If this was 20 so years ago, he could have been gone. He would have died, yeah. To put it bluntly, he would have died. Yeah. And look at the way like, 
Look at the way NASCAR responded after Dale Earnhardt died. They I mean, made they, everybody they did, use the Hans device. Exactly. They oh. they made a lot of adjustments because they were like, we don't want this to happen again. We yep. just don't want it to happen again. And, and I mean, there's drivers that sit there and they complain about the racing at Daytona and Talladega and how dangerous it is because drivers keep flipping, but there's not anything you can do. It's no, no. And it's, it's just unfortunately, a thing that happens. And that's what you sign up for when you decide. To exactly. When you I, I say it all the time, especially when you go to these plate races, when you sign up to race, you are almost you are pretty much signing your life away. Right. Just to put it bluntly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're yeah, 100% you never know right. what can happen. And, it, and we have drivers that sit here and they complain about it. And I'm like, you signed up for this. If you don't want to do this and you know the things that are at risk, then maybe you shouldn't be in the sport to begin with. Exactly. It's the same yeah. thing with like the NHL and stuff. Oh, you know you're going to you're gonna get your face busted open or something. Yeah. If you don't like it, then you don't need to be there. Yeah, get right. your face busted open. Yet you still see guys playing with faces busted open exactly. anyway. So it, right. it, it really, it really it's, is but amazing. It, but I mean, it's different. It's different in racing. Like you can't get an injury like that and keep. Racing. No, no, no. Of course, no. but no. But my my point is, it's amazing what these people put themselves through to do what they love. Sometimes it really is amazing the sacrifices that they make, and you you, yeah. you have to admire them for it. But at the same time, you you hope that they're careful. There's and, some of the bravest people like that we know in sports, because if you think about, if you just think about what they have to do and, and, and Austin brought it up, you sign your life away when you decide to do this. Yep. And if you somehow can have a whole career and you survived, you know, hats off to you. Cause we know how difficult it is. And we know that it's a unfortunate situation when we have accidents and, you know, luckily the majority of accidents that we see in these races don't end up being anything mass massively severe. Um, and a lot of the time guys are able to get out and be okay, but it's a very, it's a dangerous Risky. sport. It's a dangerous yeah. sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But the bottom line is that, yeah, it, it can be a dangerous sport. You just never know like what can Don't happen at any given moment. But at the same time, hey, if you like it, if it's great entertainment for you, great. But you just have to be mindful that anything can happen at any given moment and that you hope that if, God forbid, something does happen, said person or people make it out, like we said, to put it bluntly, alive. Alive, yep. But, hey, 100%. Listen, like I said, it's great entertainment either way. I'm actually really looking forward to watching this race. So with that being said... Who do we have winning this race, boys? Austin, oh, so you want to go first? I still haven't decided on who I want to win. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, oh, I boy. I have I have a feeling I know who could win it. Being how much speed they've shown during the few weeks of practice and everything we've had. So I'm gonna say if Ed Carpenter doesn't come out on top with how quick and how He's been, and his whole team has been fantastic. I mean, you've got Ed Carpenter starting fourth, Renus VK starting third, and Connor Daly starting back in row seven. I mean, sure, right. Daly's the odd man out, but the whole ECR camp is quick this season. Hmm. And, and so, I think, and just to tell the folks at home, especially anybody who's interested in, in putting some money down for this, Ed Carpenter comes into the Indy 500 at a plus 2,500. Okay. Just right. let everybody yeah, know. That's, that's, that's his good. odds going in. This is like the only race Ed Carpenter runs for his team anyway, so I'm just going to put it out there, and I'm just going to say Ed Carpenter's going to get it done. So. Ed Carpenter. Okay. okay. No, that's, that's fair. Neil? I was thinking about this a lot. I mean, obviously, um, I was kind of like – I was kind of just just because I wanted to be like that guy, I wanted to just kind of pick Simona D. Sylvester just because <laughs> because of the plus 50,000 odds, but – if I'm going to be like serious about this, if I'm going to be honest, I actually, I'm going to take Renus VK, uh, who's at plus 1800 okay. going into it. Um, and the reason here, and I actually, I did some of my own research. I got some information from sporting news. I mean, look, VK is only 20 years, 20, 20 years of age. And it's, it doesn't happen often that someone very, very young is able to actually pull it off because yeah. it's, it's a, because sometimes in these races, it's about experience. 
Um, yes, but I mean, you got to think of it this way too. Arenas VK just had won the Indianapolis road course that we had two weeks ago. So, I mean, right there, there's some experience right there for you. Sure, it's not the full circuit, but it's still a little bit of experience along with the week and a half we've had of practice and qualifying and stuff. So, right. I mean, he, I, I think he has enough experience to get it done. And also uh, an interesting stat that I wanted to mention, it says, um, you know, but in both 2018 and 2019, the winner of the Grand Prix has also won the Indy 500. Exactly. So I think that's something to keep in mind for it. And he's an up and coming racer. He has four top 10 finishes in five races this season. And, you know, look, he had some experience last year. I think, I think last year was his first run at yeah, the Indy 500. First. Um and obviously he's going to, you know, try to better himself and he's in the number three spot. He has the eighth best odds, like I mentioned before. And honestly, like if you're, if you're a betting person, I think that's a pretty big bang for your buck considering where he is. Um, and considering, look, he's not that far away from the top. He's kind of, he's at more of the top echelon, but more toward the middle of the pack. And I think that that's a good position to be in to start, you know, 18 right. to one odds is I think is a pretty good um, pretty good bet. And he finished, um, I think at the Grand Prix, he finished first after starting seventh and he managed to lead for 33 laps, which is the second most of any driver mm. in the race. Um, I believe first was Romain Grosjean. There you go. I didn't know that. There you go. So yeah. Yeah. Grosjean for, started on the but pole. I think, right. I think Renus is coming in on a high note. I think he feels very confident about himself and the abilities that he's able and, and the way he's been able to drive. And I think that, you know, being a young up and coming guy, I think he wants to try to really prove himself to the rest of the pack. And I think that it's easy to pick out, you know, some of the more, I guess, if you want to say more like more likely people, you know, Scott Dixon, Colton Herta, uh, Patricio o Award. I mean, those, those are the guys that I think are, would be easier bets because look where they start. But yeah, I've seen a lot of races in my time and not often does the, does one of the top three guys who start off end up being the one that finishes in first place. It's very hard to do for the amount of laps that you have to do. It's very, very hard. So I think over time, I think over time, if you want to play the long game here, I think a good bet would be uh, Venus VK. I mean, I really, I, I like him. I, I really do. So I'm going to go with VK to win Indianapolis 500. All right. Interesting. So. Also, as a much. fun pick, as a, as a sec, as a backup pick, I'm going to pick Simona D. Silvestro. <laughs> So if I'm right, I want full credit for it. Oh my goodness! But um, you know, everybody heard it here first. That's my backup option. My backup okay. option is Simone. I just, I just want to see history. I no, history no, I mean, I, so I, I don't, I, I don't blame history. you. I, I don't blame you. That'd be really, really cool. But if I'm being honest with myself here, I'm looking at this roster, and to me, the best driver is going to win it. And to me, the best driver is Colton Herta. I, I, I think he's the best one. I mean, based on what Austin was telling me, he's been absolutely amazing. Would I like to see Sato defend his title? Absolutely. Who wouldn't want to see someone defend their title? But I don't think it's going to happen. And yes, it would be amazing to see a woman win the Indy 500. You're right about that, Neil. I would love to see it. But if I'm being 100% honest, Colton Herta, to me, is going to get the job done and he will be the Indianapolis 500 champion so just to tell yeah. everybody again from the betting perspective uh the odds for colton herta are at plus 650 so yeah, okay okay there you go yes yeah, so for yeah. anybody who for so, anybody who wants to bet money there you go <laughs> and i'm sure a lot of people are going to be betting money on this race this and on that note betting, betting what's, that, what's that awesome a lot of people tend to bet on this race <laughs> this and especially now that you know sports betting is more allowed, you know, with DraftKings, cool. FanDuel, all these. Since, you know, but I, I do have a question since we did get a uh, sure. Neil's underdog pick. Jimmy, who's your underdog pick? Oh, yeah, boy. everybody has to have an underdog pick as yeah, well. I, so I need an underdog pick because honestly, I, I want to make some graphics and now I need honestly, pick. you're not allowed to pick, underdog underdog pick. pick. I mentioned pick them earlier some. Hinchcliffe. Hinchcliffe, Hinchcliffe. My underdog, okay. Under, underdog pick. I mean, is that really an underdog pick? He's kind of in the middle of the pack. I mean, yeah, he's an underdog because he hasn't performed very well the last few years, but I mean. Th th thank you. Thank you. I, I thought he was going to go with Andretti because considering <laughs> he is. And, and, and Andretti would be nice too. 
But your, your under your underdog pick is Simona Neal. Austin, what about yep. you? My underdog pick, I'm going to take the man who crashed out earlier in the week, and I'm going to say it's going to end up being Santino Ferrucci. Okay. Ferrucci in, okay. His, Ferrucci in his first Indy 500 made some very big moves, and he had some he had some eyes on him when Dale Jr. said that Santino Ferrucci was his favorite driver that year. Okay. So, I mean, if that tells you something, yep. I have faith in Santino Ferrucci and – that Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan car that they have set up for him is very competitive. Fair enough. So just to review, so I have Colton Herta winning the Indy 500 with my underdog pick being James Hinchcliffe. Neil, you have as my underdog. No, yes. for the whole week for everything. Oh, for, for the whole thing, whole thing. oh, oh, oh. Um, I have. I just lost it for a second. Uh, Renus VK as my VK, main right. pick, and my underdog pick is Simona D. Sylvester and both interestingly enough they're both on the outside you know on the third oh, they're, they're, they're on the right okay. so I think that will make it even more interesting if one of them is able to pull it off yeah awesome. and they really they really put to 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 Kuma Sato like in a bad position considering they didn't put him in that situation he put himself in that, he put situation, himself in that situation right right that's fair but that's Neil's picks Austin I have Ed Carpenter and Santino Ferrucci, two different driving styles, which okay. is very interesting. But okay, I know one very, can very be aggressive and one's a little calmer behind the wheel. So, so those watch, those watching or listening at home, remember those picks and then come back to kill us later when one of us is wrong. I, already, on that note, I was going to say I already put them in our group chat. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, he does. And on have that them, note, he does have them in our group chat, so we're all good. Okay, I'm, perfect. I'm gonna, here in a little while, I'll probably make some graphics for us. Yep, I'm, I'm just seeing it right now. You do have them down. Make Perfect. some graphics, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and make on that graphics. note, that'll wrap it up for this very interesting episode of the Bottom Line Podcast. We went from a lot of banter to Indy 500. Hey, hey, Let us know up. what you think. Jimmy, oh. leave, leave the banter alone. The banter makes for some good stuff. <laughs> I've been told by a lot of people they enjoy our banter. Oh, oh no, we're banter, leaving that the in there. Don't worry. What, the banter is what makes the podcast. From what, exactly. I, and from what I hear is that a lot of people like the me and Neil banter that we had going last episode. <laughs> yeah. Let us know what you Let's think. Let's have some banter at the result everything. of the 500 and why it's bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What? Let us We're know all what gonna be, watch, watch us all be wrong. Watch it be I, like I someone yeah. all be wrong. Watch it be like, honestly, watch it be like Ed Jones or something like that. I wouldn't be oh mad at Ed Jones. I mean. No, I'm not saying, but it would be like, well, none of us got it right. We had no. six picks <laughs> among us, and none of them were right. Exactly. <laughs> six out of 33. I think that's a, that's pretty decent odds. That's pretty yeah. decent odds. <laughs> we got mean, a shot. Here's the thing. Just if Simona bit, does not bit. finish in last place, that's a win in itself. <laughs> she exactly. doesn't finish in last place. <laughs> I mean, there is also, we also from, forgot to mention Tony Cannon, though. Tony Cannon's a very – he's up oh, there. Oh, yeah, and that's he's right. Very, he's very quick. That's the uh, car that Jimmy Johnson runs part time for the road courses. Who well, Jimmy Johnson decides, hey, I'm gonna run the road courses instead of the ovals. And what has Jimmy done in the road courses? Finish last in every single <laughs> one. <laughs> and because because Jimmy Johnson needs to stick to what he's good at. Exactly. And then mm-hmm. what does uh, our good friend Tony Kanon come and do? He goes and qualifies in the second row, I believe. No, I think he's first. second row. He's yeah, in the second, second row, row inside. Or he's second row in the middle. Or so, if you want to, if you want to make it easy for people, fifth place. Yeah, fifth place. There you go. So I mean, <laughs> you really think about it. It shows who spot. has talent and who doesn't. <laughs> but the real question is, Austin. The real question that has not been answered yet. We all know that. Well, if people don't know, um, usually the winner of the Indy 500 drinks um, milk. Usually, oh. mm-hmm. my question is: the real question is simply this. Where does that milk come from? I, I, I want to. I looked it up, and it doesn't tell us where the milk comes from. Oh, that's a lot. No, oh, they come be, on. It's, no, so, they somebody's sell gotta it. know. Here's the thing: they gotta sell it. They gotta sell it. I, I, I just want to know. Wait, hold on, hold on. It needs five hundred milk. That's yeah, well, well, I'm gonna look this well, up while, while, while Neil looks this up. This yeah, I'm gonna look this up. I was gonna say I do know it's a buttermilk though. Oh, wait, no, oh. I just saw an uh, article here written three days ago from the Indy Star. It said why the Indy 500 winner drinks milk and why it can no longer be buttermilk. Oh. oh. One driver wants 
One driver says that he wants chocolate milk. If you who said that? It's I probably Ferrucci. Is that Are you who said kidding it? Me. It's probably Ferrucci. Well, let me see. Oh, no, it was. I think it was. Wait, who the hell said this? Who the hell said this? Wait, I don't is know. It, oh no, Juan Pablo Montoya said that he. Are wanted, you kidding me? He wants chocolate milk. <laughs> Yo, what's wrong with that? Wow. How about this? How about this? You have you have regular white milk for the winner. Second place gets chocolate milk, and third place gets um, Buttermilk. uh, pink pink milk, <laughs> pink no, chocolate I'm... milk. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! I'm gonna have to. I'm memeing that later. Oh, uh, one Pablo, <laughs> I'm memeing you later, bud. I like this. What's with? I like one of the questions on Google. What's with the milk at the Indy 500? <laughs> <laughs> it's an accurate question. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. Ten awkward questions about NASCAR people ask on the internet. Do Indy 500 drivers wear diapers? Oh, my God. It's an God. actual question. It's an actual question. I'm not even going to question it. Gosh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I may have found it. Wait a minute. You found it? I found it. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. Okay. I found this it. Gonna be good. So the milk comes from the American Dairy Association in Indiana. Oh, well, So makes sense. now I'm going to look up, can I buy it? Yeah, yes, I can. Hey, Neil, if you can buy it, you mind buying three bottles? Yeah. Will, yeah, we'll drink to the, yeah, we'll drink, we'll drink a yeah, bottle set, set, of Indy. Send Apple's. some to Austin and I. Hold on, let me look at let me see my Indy 500 see milk. If they come with the glass bottles. Too, Yo, like, wait a minute. Wait, oh bottles. wait, wait, wait. You could totally lie about this. Uh-oh. Bro, you could buy the bottle oh, and then gosh. just put regular milk in it and be like, oh I'm how much are the bottles? <laughs> $16 on eBay. What? Neil, you, Neil <laughs> Jimmy, when are you get getting the purchase? Damn it. Hey, hey, my birthday! Hey, me. hey, my birthday's coming up soon, so you all know what yeah, to get. Yeah, a few weeks. Get some damn. Get some <laughs> damn milk in a few months. Woo. Get get some Indy five hundred. Well, hold on, hold on. Can birthday. I actually? No, I don't want the bottle. I want the milk. Forget no, you the, want bottle. the bottle. No, we want the milk. I we want, want to know where the milk comes from. Uh, go to Indiana Indi- and go get the milk. It's that easy. There's a uh, no, bro. There's got to be, man. Let me look at shopping. Oh, I'm actually boy. like, I like how half of this podcast is me just talking about where the milk comes from. I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying this. When it, winners you. drink milk, bro. Winners drink milk. Here's the thing. Yeah, you're, bro. Bro, are we on some vegan stuff now? Why it's not buttermilk because everybody just wants to complain? Is milk oh getting can? Gosh. Is milk part of cancel culture now? No. <laughs> I mean, milk is part of cancel culture. I swear hey, to God. Hey, hey, I found something. What, what? is it? What'd you find? There's a special edition milk sold by Prairie Farms, and it's called, they call it a winner's drink milk. Oh, my God. And it's supposedly the same milk that they. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, there's a shirt I see. Wait, winnersdrinkmilk.com. What is this? Are you There's an actual website, too? Are you kidding me? Bruh. They even have recipes for blackened fish tostados. What the hell is going what? on? Here's a all no, sorts of information no, today. Jo- oh, this is great. Instead of join the newsletter, it's join the moose, the moose letter. God. Ask a dietitian. Bro, where is your store? Let me know where I can buy this stuff. Wow. No, I don't <laughs> care about the recipe. <laughs> Bro, piss off. You went about from milk us. to no. finding a recipe about fish. Hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. Winners drink milk for sale. Oh, there God. we go. Because <laughs> I don't think you could get it in New Jersey, unfortunately. If, if, if you're enjoying this conversation, please let us know on social media. <laughs> unfortunately, all I could get is a stupid shirt or a hat. I don't oh, know. I saw, I saw a bottle on sale on eBay. Yeah, but it's the bottle. It's not the milk itself. For what, like 15 bucks? For the bo- for the plastic bottle from Prairie Farms, it's five dollars. Five bucks, okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What is the ni- yo? Wait, maybe Shoprite is selling it. <laughs> no what, way! Did, Come you, you on, don't know. no way. You don't know. No way. Shoprite sells that. Come on. Oh yeah. Well, let's find out. Let's find right. out here. All right. I'm, a, Come I'm on. actually quite curious. Yes, you you <laughs> should be. You I'm pretty be. sure only a shop right in Indianapolis would sell that, if that's the case, then. No, no, no. Because okay. people want it. <laughs> people want that milk, man. I mean, you could also just buy a random carton of milk, put it in one of those glasses and say, oh, I have milk. Yeah. Mm, 
True. You could. You could do that. Right. That's it. I give up. And you know what? I'm going to get one of those glasses and I'm going to put Yoohoo in it just to really oh, piss people off. Hey, all I know is that just Please let me do. know if you're buying glasses because I No, honestly, like, I would be. No, here's the thing. I think I'm just going to make a trip to Indiana in my lifetime and just find this milk. I'm just curious. <laughs> just like, go solely up, for the milk. Just, just bring it back home. Growing up, growing up, that's the only way I knew about the Indianapolis 500 because I just saw dudes drinking milk at the end of the race. I was going to say, just let me know when you come to Indiana. I'm like two hours from... Right. We'll make, a trip. we'll make a trip to... Uh, we'll, we'll make a trip a, We'll have a bottom line road trip. Oh, no, my I'll, God. I'll go to the Indy 500. Live just, from the Indianapolis 500. Yeah. Live from the yeah. Indy 500, the bottom line podcast. Right, no, and I'm going to have a sign that just says, I'm just here for the milk. No, <laughs> see, see, if that ever happens, we have to have garage passes, too. Garage oh, bag? goodness. How is that? We gotta have passes to get into the garages and interview the drivers and everything. Yeah, that and that would ask, be sick. And just once again ask, can I have some of the milk just cause? It goes up, <laughs> goes up to goes over to Takuma Sato. Hey Takuma, how's that milk taste and where can I get some? <laughs> where can oh I get it? No, who's in charge of the 85 run? I was like, yo, where's that milk coming from? I'm I'm gonna t- <laughs> I'm gonna tweet at Indianapolis Motor Speedway from the bottom line account and be like, hey, where oh can my I, God, where can podcast yeah, Jimmy. the milk? Jimmy, when we're done recording, tweet at the Indianapolis 500 saying, where can I get this delicious milk? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm going to do, right do that right now. Hold on. I'm going to do that right now on tweet Twitter. At bottom of the WFCX. Go the follow us. I was going to say, we need to tweet them and see if they'll send us some milk. <laughs> and we just get, yeah, no, we just get that the milkman comes to our house, just gives us a <laughs> select sort of buttermilk. Wait, Indianapolis, Indy 500 buttermilk. Maybe I can find it. Buttermilk. Aha. Use. Wait, why did I get oh, Indy 500 goodness. Butterfly Farm? Wait. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? Oh, also, this is... Oh, wait, so this year's Indy 500 is the first one they're not giving buttermilk. That's crap. Yeah. Oh. Let me look this up. Each driver's milk choice... They have a choice yeah, now? Yeah, you, ch- you get a milk choice. Oh, no wonder. No wonder Mont- Montoya wants freaking... Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh regular. Oh, milk buttermilk goes for the next best thing. Exactly. Unbelievable. But, like, I think it's it, yeah. It reads here: buttermilk is no longer an option. So after Sunday's Indy 500, the designated milk people—that's what they call them—from <laughs> the American Dairy Association of Indiana. Ha! So now we know where we have to go. There you uh, go. We'll pull one <laughs> of three bottles each. We'll, we'll pull one of three bottles, one from each milk option, from a chilled cooler, which one of the milk people is often handcuffed to. So you mean to tell me that there's Excuse a me? dude standing next to a container of milk the entire time? The time I, where can I get that job? <laughs> Yo, that's I, like... I've, I've, I've got nothing It's like the equivalent of being the holder of the Stanley Cup. It's like the it's the same thing. It's like you know, the Stanley Cup, and I get to stay next Who to cares? milk. You get to go True. To the who cares? Your job is to go to the Indy 500. <laughs> right. Next, next, you the next the thing Indy you know, next thing you know, they're gonna drink milk from the Stanley Cup. Bruh, why not? Why not? Maybe <laughs> I mean, what, Phil maybe... Castle ate hot dogs from the Stanley Cup. Hey, bro. Oh maybe my somebody, gosh. Here's the thing. Maybe somebody who wins the Stanley Cup is friends with the Indy 500 winner, and maybe they just drink milk together. They drink buttermilk. <laughs> Yo, where can I get this just... buttermilk from? I was gonna say, I know Graham Rahal's a Columbus Blue Jackets fan. There, there you go. go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness! But Bro, this was the things that the things we got ourselves into. <laughs> no, this was this was an absolutely fun episode. I really, really enjoyed this. Oh, but... bro, wait, wait a minute. There's an actual list. There's an oh, actual no. list from who tweeted this? Who actually tweeted this? Indiana Dairy Association actually tweeted. <laughs> I can't. I don't think I can read everybody's name here. I maybe I can. Of everybody who what I was say, type I was of say, milk send they, the t- send the tweet bro, in the group it, chat and I'll read no, the name. No, unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, when I click on it, it, says like it's not available anymore. So I don't know if somebody like I don't know if it was. Oh. A, but no, there's a list here that says 2021 Indianapolis 500 milk preference poll. So you want to hear this? You want to hear who prefers oh, what? Gosh. Great. Okay. So Mark Andretti, Mark Andretti, whole milk. Sebastian Bord. Dice, okay. uh, 2%. Sebastian Bourdais. Bourdais, yeah. he wants 2%, whatever that means. Ed Carpenter okay. wants buttermilk or whole milk because he's cool. 
Helio Castro Helio Castro Nevis wants two percent. Okay. Max Chilton wants Hall two percent. Buttermilk two percent. Hall two percent. Hall 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 two percent. Two percent. Two percent. Two percent. All right. So let's go. Let's see if I could get everybody's name that we picked. So let's start with Jimmy. Jimmy, who do you have winning the Indy five hundred? Jimmy had Colton, Colton Herta. Colton Herta. Colton Herta. Let's see. Is his freaking name on here? Yeah, he wants Hall Milk. He's a loser. Okay. <laughs> Um, total loser. Um, hey, Neil, you had a uh, Renus VK. All right, what does VK want? Where's Re- Where's Renus VK? He wants whole milk. He's also a loser. Okay. And then oh, I dude. had Ed Carpenter. Ed Carpenter. Ed Carpenter wants buttermilk. He's the only one on this list that wants buttermilk. Wow. So have- and then, and then our underdog. You had Simona. Oh, Simona wants buttermilk. It's over. Oh my god. Oh, all right, all right. Hinch so if, if, if she if she game. wins this now. I swear. No, that's the odds you got to go with. Forget DraftKings. Go with the milk the preference milk. poll. <laughs> okay. Whoever so wants buttermilk is guaranteed to win this race. Okay, so what's Hinchcliffe want? Hinchcliffe. Oh, Hinchcliffe. Yeah, he's my underdog pick. Yeah, he's also a loser. He wants whole milk. What about oh, Santino come on. Bro, no skim? Nobody wants skim? Nobody wants wow. almond milk? What is wrong with you people? <laughs> oh, my God. Drink some almond milk. What, what was the next one, Austin? Uh, Santino Ferrucci. Ferrucci, Ferrucci, he is a loser. He wants whole milk. Aww. And then, and then you have Juan Pablo Montoya, the only person on this list. Chocolate. <laughs> Do we just want? Wait, hold on. Do we just want Juan Pablo to win so we can see that? I feel like yes. I kind of want to see that. Now. Yes. <laughs> just For the drench- sole purpose of him seeing chocolate milk, I want to see him just win. Just drenching himself in chocolate milk. It's beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You're yeah, right. He's like, oh hell yeah! Oh my God. <laughs> Cracks open a can of YooHoo. Starts drinking it. So yeah, there's like there's two people who want buttermilk, which is uh, Bourdois and also Diesel uh, Diesel Bestro. Mm-hmm. They both want buttermilk. You have okay. a bunch of losers who want whole milk, <laughs> and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people. That wants two percent because Takuma Sato, I'm assuming, got two percent last year. Probably. And now the real question is, what does Dixon want? Yeah, he's oh. not winning. No, he's not winning. He's not winning. He wants whole milk. He's not going to win. I was going to say, so Scott Dixon probably winning. wants some New Zealand kind of milk. Oh Jesus! Oh my God! Are you kidding me? Him and, him and freaking Scott McLaughlin probably want some kind of New Zealand milk. Bro, shout out to the American Dairy Association of Indiana, by the way, for all of this information. Yes, it is thank so you. much. Bro, like, bro, they actually gave them a, they said to them, all right, write down which milk you want. I would just be like, I would just write down almond milk just to see what happens. It's just like, <laughs> I bet. They're I, just no, like, I, get out of here. I would, I would look at that and be like, I bet you people don't even have it. You don't even believe oh in God. that stuff. Wait, Probably what's the not. craziest type of milk? Now I'm looking that up. Craziest type of milk. Well, the, there's there's cashew milk. Wait, there's soy milk. Wait. Let me look uh, it up. Oat milk. What? Jimmy, there's, did you ma- Jimmy? Did you make that tweet? Hmm. I said, did you make that tweet yet? I can't find any 500 on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know what their hands are. <laughs> tag Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There you go. Okay. Tag Yo. Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Oh God! Yo. What did he find? They got hemp milk. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. Fun with this one quinoa all right all right to kind of wrap this whole thing up here is the list of some of the weirdest kinds of milk that is out there number one almond milk screw you almond milk is delicious no uh, um, I, I, almond milk almond milk is good peanut milk no no, yep. no i like that goodbye goodbye rice milk I, I i have heard of that i've heard of that yeah i've heard of that Hazelnut milk. That's good. I've heard of that. All right. Then we got That's hemp milk. Good. Hemp milk. <laughs> hemp milk. Yep. Yep. Flax oh. milk. And yeah. actually, there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a writing under these if you want me to read that as well. It sounds kind of funny. Oh gosh. Do you, you want me to read it? I won't. I don't Go have to. It. So with almond milk, it says literally a mixture of water and almonds. This yes. nut milk pause looks nothing like the creamy milk you are used to. Pause. Major pause. You have to shake it up. 
She, what is with this article? You have yeah, to no. shake it up a little after the <laughs> almond. Just, just, just continue. Bro, this sounds so wrong. You have to shake you it up a little after the almond. No, Austin, guys, listen to this next line. You have to shake it up a little after the almond meat has settled at the bottom of the jar. And then maybe, just maybe, it will look like milk. Bad news, though, it does nothing to fix the taste. It's watery almonds. God. Peanut milk. And they have a gift here of Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec saying, which is water that's lying about being milk. Everybody see that show? You know what I'm talking about. Have you ever tasted water that's just been boiled with peanuts in it? Nobody has and nobody should. But for some reason, it's one of the latest non-dairy milk obsessions. If you want peanut in liquid form, just have peanut soup or better, don't have peanut nope. in liquid form. No interest. <laughs> Ow. Goodbye. I didn't hear about the hemp milk. No, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a moment. We'll get Rice to that. Milk. Relax. Rice relax. Milk. This might surprise you, but rice milk comes really close to looking like milk. Odd as it may seem, rice milk is one of the more tolerable types of milk out there. While the taste isn't very strong, it does have that ricey aftertaste. It can easily be passed off as milk replacement. Okay, and I don't know about that one, but okay. Hazelnut milk. This seems legit. Hazelnut milk seems legit. If you yeah. think we're done substituting dairy milk with nut extract, you are very wrong. Hazelnut, however, is one of the nicer nuts to consume as milk. Pause. The best part of Nutella is also the best part of non-dairy milk. It tastes like a bottle of hazelnuts, and we aren't complaining about it. By the way, this is from an article from Mashable India. So Interesting. Take okay. that. Hemp milk. All right, here you go, Austin. Oh, no. This is, this is for you. Have fun trying to convince yourself that this is a type of milk. Hemp milk ends up having this top layer that's green in color when it settles. It looks very odd, and the conflicting sweetness on the first few sips doesn't help. It is a confusing kind of milk that is the most non-milky of the lot. Oh, my. Flex milk. Goodness. Flex milk. Make the error of buying unsweetened version of this milk, and you'll instantly understand why you mustn't go against nature and decide what goes into milk on your own. Flex milk is known for its healthy benefits, high fiber content, and most of all, bitterness just the thought of adding it to your coffee gives me chills and honestly who okayed this <laughs> and then quinoa milk oh quinoa no milk. oh no the ancient grain that has found its way into many health freaks diets is also a source of milk at this point we aren't even surprised quinoa have yeah. several health benefits beating rice at protein and fiber content but it belongs in the list of worst kind of milk there are most passively good options for non-milk out there we have oat milk that tastes like a glass of oatmeal cookies. That's actually very true, which is pretty mm. tasty. And then there's soy milk, one of the earliest milk substitutes. That's something dairy haters and lactose intolerant folks can stick with. And I think that's the last one. You think? Yeah, that's, that's the last one. You, you just want to make, wow, you want to make a final check there. So yeah, we got. So again, the weirdest milks are almond milk, peanut milk, rice milk, hazelnut milk, hemp milk, flax milk, quinoa milk, and yeah, that's it. So out of all these, Unbelievable. Out of all these, I'm going with oatmeal milk as my choice. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 with you 100 percent Because people and on that are note. delusional. Oh, wait, bro, there's a <laughs> 21st century guide to weird milks from GQ magazine. This is so weird. What unbelievable. Bro, they even have the color of what it looks like. It's like oh my no interest. Milk. Is there any funny ones? Give me give me something funny. What is this Gosh. called? Oh, that's that's mean. That's that's really mean. <laughs> milk protein shake, uh, cashew milk. Okay, I've heard that one. Yeah. Ooh, everyone's favorite, coconut milk. Yes. Everyone's favorite. I I, I actually really love coconut. It's milk. disgusting. It's disgusting. What? It oh, makes come you question on. life. You're delusional. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, right. I'm delusional. Yet you know they what? Make you know what? Milk. Guess what? We're gonna we're going to, we are going to field an Indy 500 car. And I'm going to ask for coconut milk. <laughs> I'm going to ask for oatmeal milk. And not a, no, I'm going to ask for no. Honestly, no, you know what? We're going to ask. We're going to ask for hemp. We're going to ask for hemp milk. No, I, yeah, I'm going to ask for hemp milk, and then India is like, go. "What?" It's like, yeah, get me some hemp milk, or I'm not racing. Give me the hemp yes. milk now. <laughs> Give me my hemp. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, this was a very, very interesting yet fun episode of the bottom line podcast let us know what you think of everything we've discussed and <laughs> no, i do mean create, everything jimmy, jimmy they need to create a they need to create a, a meme that says like nascar drivers oh i drink soda after i win indy indy 500 drivers oh yeah i drink hemp milk after i win <laughs> no no it's meal 
No, Neil, it's NASCAR drivers. I drink, I drink, I drink champagne after I win Indy 500 oh, drivers. Gosh. I drink milk when I win, Neil. I drink milk. Bro, it's like, it's like, uh, even when you're winning, you're still making a healthier choice. True. That is true. That is true. Anyway, though, please let us know what you think of everything we discussed. And again, I do mean everything, everything. on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, no, bottom we're, line, we talked about so much. We're trying to get so many different audiences. We're trying to get the milk fan base in here. <laughs> trying to get some milk people in here. All right. So all the milk hate, all, all the milk supporters out there, the milk fascists, you know, you know, hit me up. Let's have a discussion. Yeah, hit, yes. up, hit, hit, hit Neil up on Twitter at the MVP Show and on Instagram at NVPQB. How about some damn milk? Austin, where can people follow you on social media? So you guys can follow me at Mr. Taco BLP on Instagram and Twitter. There you go. There you go. Let us know what you think of everything. If you're looking for your don't daily, to use the hashtag. If you're looking for your daily line. milk recommendations, I'm your guy. Oh yeah, my go god. Buy, I'm gonna go buy the hashtag bottom right. line. Gentlemen, I'm gonna go buy some oat milk and also some <laughs> flax from some hemp milk while I'm out. So oh my hey, let me know when you find that. Let me know when you find <laughs> hemp milk. We'll have, we'll, have, we'll, we'll have a taste test live on stream. We'll stream oh, me lot we'll live stream me drinking drinking different types of milk to see which one's the best for Indy 500. <laughs> And as always, if you yeah. like what you're seeing on YouTube, please drop a like and a comment down below. It helps out tremendously. And please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss that episode. And subscribe on all audio listening platforms. Just include Jimmy when searching for this podcast. An interesting yet very, very fun episode. I can't wait to see what our I also just found a list of one. the best chocolate milk. So Montoya, if you need some recommendations, hit me up. I will let you know which one is the best. Um, there's some good ones on here. A lot of organic ones because people are lame, um, <laughs> really lame, really, really, really lame. Wow. Yo, can y'all stop with the organic stuff, man? Just just drink like a normal person. Go, go with the real thing. Wait, there's like a top 16 on mash.com. Oh, this is oh, great. Okay. Yo, number five is you. Oh, Don't. my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Wait, that's it. That's it, Austin. That's it. If I ever become a NASCAR driver, I want to be sponsored by Yugo. No questions asked. <laughs> I want to be sponsored by Yugo. What go. is number one on this list? Before that can we, be done. You know, before, we, before we log off, the top three, the top three chocolate milks ranked oh, are God. number one is Promised Land Midnight Chocolate Whole Milk because why not? Number two, Trader Joe's oh, Chocolate wow. Whole Milk. I've actually had so I know what I'm I've actually had the chocolate milk. Later. Okay. At, okay. At number three, which I've seen a lot of, Fair Life chocolate milk. Yeah, yeah I've heard, that, that, that's, that's, like, that's one of the, the third one. brands out there. What is Dari Gold? That's a Dari Gold. The hell, the hell. Oh, yo, Oatly. Yo, I heard Oatly's actually good. Oh, that that that's Oatly the oat, oat milk. drink yeah. chocolate. That's what it's called. Okay, okay, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I'm gonna go get get me a carton of that. Oh, Ronnie <laughs> Bro- Ronnie Brooks a good brand. Horizon Organic has always been a good one. Uh, what yeah. else we got here? Whole Foods, yeah, no, screw Whole Foods, they suck. Chocolate <laughs> soy silk milk. Oh, Boss. silk. I, I, uh, yeah, what else? Kirkland, oh, Kirkland. Yeah. True Moo, yeah. Yes. <laughs> True Moo. What yes. else we got here? We got Almond Breeze. Shout out to Almond Breeze. They the goats. Okay. Um, Hershey's chocolate. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hershey's chocolate milk. I'm weak. I'm oh weak. My gosh. Yo, I actually am going to go get some chocolate milk when we're done. I'm going to go buy some chocolate milk. <laughs> you know what? Well, you know what? well we, we, are, we are done right now. Street, you know we'll where to find milk. milk. Wait, what yeah, Jimmy, awesome? can we have a, can we do a top five list, like, later on? Top ten list of the best chocolate top, milk? Top five milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you I'm what, I made it. I tell no you honorable what, mentions. Is, yo, number 16 is next. No one. honorable mentions. Number 16 is Nesquik. You are smoking. Or I was going to say, uh, so when I make that trip to come see you guys, we could just have that uh, that chocolate milk taste test. Chocolate milk taste test. We got to got to try it. Got to see which one is which. Oh my goodness! Also, gracious. Jimmy, don't pay attention to the, to that uh, group chat. <laughs> oh goodness! And on not, that note, not that'll wrap with it up the for us. That'll wrap it up for us. This was a fun episode. Let us know Jimmy wanted to Jimmy stuff. wanted to wrap this up like 45 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs>
I just I just kept going with milk. I think we've talked about milk for a solid 40 minutes. We've talked I, about it for a solid yeah, half hour. Sounds about right. But now I think we officially... spent more time talking about other sports and milk than we actually talked about the Indy 500. <laughs> No, I think I think we're You're right because we've been on for about an hour and a half, so I think it was about even. Yeah, true. Anyway, no. Now we're officially done. For new little piano and for Austin Myers, aka Mister Taco. I'm Jimmy Fadizzi. This is the Bottom Line Podcast, and we will see you in the next episode. Make sure you Peace. drink your milk. Drink your and do milk. that too, and Damn go it. buy some. Drink, drink and your hemp the milk. Hemp milk is good for you. Drink your hemp milk. Watch the Peace and enjoy the ND500 and go buy yourself some damn milk. Take care of yourselves.